And to you, in terms of clothing, because you're a clothing company, have, what did that do for you? It's just a whole free style, isn't it? Just yeah. get into clubs and do what you want and just be free and go mad to, to music. That just wasn't around for There's no style or anything. Right. You know? So, Mash got into Acid House. Um, what sort of people would you catering for? Too many people. <laughs> <laughs> too many people. Too many people. I think it's mainly. Um, I mean, what I from what I see, it's quite a young sort of uh, clubby sort of raving person at the moment, um, because there's such a wide selection of, of clothes, different colours, bright colours. It all sort of goes along with the, the bright, loud sort of style of the music, um, and, and the different t-shirts with the designs and things, and the express yourself and right. everyone being free and all the designs that come out. And, it gives people a bit of um, individuality and, and a bit of a, a sideline away from the slipstream sort of jeans, jacket and sweatshirt, that type of image. And it was a whole new sort of like creative, you know, a whole new concept of clothing and people that want to get out and dance and, and have a good time, find the clothes. So in terms of like um, creativity, I mean, did you find your creativity came from the people themselves or fashion designers? I could take it you employ fashion designers. Well, I think it's basically, you know, with people that come in, um, what they're wearing, I mean, certain ideas and the music and what people would actually like to see. Um, a lot of the, the garments that we get, people are pop, you know, the, the suppliers are often into the scene as well, aren't they? And they supply and clothes where they've been out clubbing and, and that sort of thing and they, they see what people like to wear, people that cut out their own garments and paste up their own things. They think that'll look good and then everything just sort of moves forward with all the you know gimmicky clothing and uh, there was an interest and so it's just kind of a stage further isn't it really and sort of like new styles and, and from the, the gimmicky t-shirts they've become really nice tops and, and that sort of thing. So when you say from the gimmicky t-shirts I mean just what happened in terms of I mean, where did I think this it was start just, from? I think it was just talking raves, um, people sort of like tuning into the same sort of wavelengths and, and thinking the same things while they were sort of like dancing away to this music and, and there was just one feel and one sort of like theme throughout the whole thing and, and people were saying certain phrases and, and, and when they were coming around sort of in the morning, coming back from the clubs and talking about what a good time they had. Um, other people picking up on it and thinking, hey, that would be good for a, a slogan and taking it and putting it onto clothing. And then a lot of the dancers and people that go out clubbing and raving could relate to that, picking up the clothing and thinking, yeah, they're being in demand. Let's make some more of this popular. And so I think the clothing has sort of stemmed and become its own sort of unique style, really, that people that are raving and clubbing, and, you know, they automatically look at a certain design and think, oh, yeah, you can see it straight away, whereas someone that would have bought a leather jacket and a pair of jeans and a nice smart pair of robes wouldn't know really what they're talking about. So it's like an elitist little, little club. Right. So when you say it's like an elitist club, do you mean like um, you've got people from the underground scene or is it all sorts of people from a main stream of mainstream? I think here, I mean with the music, I mean there's a lot of people from the underground scene that come in, might pick up a couple of things here and there, you know, do a few things with MASH. Um, here for the music as well. But where it's sort of stemmed, I mean, because it's so, it, it's really expanded over the last few years, there's more dance music in the charts, there's more people picking up the sounds and the ideas and the clothes, and, and it's, it's, you know, really there for anyone. I mean, often the people that come here, a lot of people come here every single Saturday, you know, year in, year out, you know, you get to know all the faces because this is where they come to get their gear. But, there's often quite a few people passing through, I mean, just sort of tourists, and they sort of tune into the stuff as well, and everyone brings people in. And so your 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 scene as really one of the sort of most upfront clothing uh, shops in London. I don't know. You obviously know you've got that title, and um, what makes you stay so upfront? I think it's because we have some young sort of staff and, and music and and interesting clothes that are always sort of <coughs> changing each time. You come here one week and there's a few things and the next week it's changed. And there's a lot of influences from different sort of suppliers, people with different ideas and things that, you know, you get a lot of variety. And it's not just the same sort of run of the mill, although you get a few lines, 
then we tried to keep things limited. We don't just stop the whole range. It's just a few selective bits. And so people come here and think, well, I know if I get it from Match, you know, there's, there's not going to be a few around. And uh, we tend to keep the clientele coming in that way. So what about the competition? What competition? <laughs> <laughs> it's what not competition? competition. Match is no. only Match in London. It's yeah. different. I mean, mash clothing is just mash clothing. Um, I mean, mash as a shop is the clothing, is the music, is the people that work here, is the, the 73 Oxford Street, you know, the whole thing. And even though you get a granddad top here, there, and everywhere, most people will come into mash because of the same mash on it, or, you know, they know that people here, it's a nice atmosphere, it's got a mash label in the back because it's everything that goes with it when you're walking down the street with a mash bag. Talking you know, about labels, too. talking about labels, I understand that you actually have some of the most upfront type of labels coming into your shops. People like Joe Bloggs, um, yeah. you must be mentioning some others, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, we do stop sort of Ava Rex and Keto and, and sort of a few of the, the top line, you know, items and stuff. But um, we try to keep them limited so we can get a few of, a few items of every major um, label in here, together with unusual sort of foreign um, designs and local designs that bring in stuff. So it's a whole mixture. Um, so it's not just one whole theme. You come in and, and you buy all your, your chippy gear or your Joe Lord's gear. Well, your mask fashion. I understand you had some hammer trousers as well. Yeah, yeah. We tend to. I mean, we go with with whatever's popular basically. If someone offers us something and it's and it's interesting, it's what people want. Um, we tend to, to get a few of them, stop them, and when they're gone, it's too bad. But...
clubs at the moment? Well we're involved in like the box, Danny Brixton, Land Right Terrorist, yeah. Like that is a specialising in pure black music. I hear that's a very happy yeah, place yeah, to be. Yeah, it's just like pure black music, soul mainly. You know what I mean? Like not dance music, not so much house, a little bit of garage, you know, soul from house. You know? I hear you also have soul to soul playing. Yeah, soul to soul down on Saturday. We've got like swing and boogie, up front boogie on the like Friday. So, you know, from the point of view of a major record company, yeah. if they were to be interested in you yeah. and sort of like offer you your own record label yeah. with full distribution, yeah. would you be interested in something like that? Well, not really, we've got our own label. <laughs> we've got our own label, we get it distributed fully anyway. You know what I mean? We've had like two number ones in the reggae charts already. So, like. What about in the upfront dance section? Wouldn't you be interested in that as well? As mm. one of your options? Yeah, we've got, we've got like a couple. Wait, like a couple projects coming out in the near future. Because probably. the argument has been that um, some majors have been a bit slow in picking up what's happening, mm. and as a consequence, mm. some of these majors are now picking up and some of the talents that are in tune with what's happening, like yeah. your, people like yeah. yourselves, yeah. you know, as yeah. we know, Jazzy B, yeah. um, Terry Jervis, yeah. uh, Giles, yeah. uh, Peterson. Yeah. Uh, people like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Music, what they play in these raves? 
Whoa. In the beginning, it was just like acid house, hardcore acid, you know, heavy, heavy techno and all that sort of stuff. But now it's like broken down more, freestyle, more dance, you know what I mean? Little crossovers, like the commercial market as well, for everyone. <laughs> What sort of people make um, rave music? Um, well, it's generally from like, the bedroom, you know? People in the bedroom starting with like, listening to the radio, and, like, whereas the parks are cut off, you know, to hear the music and the raves are too expensive, just get down to it and make their own. And from there, they feel safe it's ready. A lot of the stuff is like, raw. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of the music out there is just really, really raw. You know, not like how you go on a major company, cut down to a certain degree, it's not. I ain't got that feel again, you know what I mean? What sort of stuff do you use to record this stuff? Well, it's all basic equipment, like, like, four track, like a four track, um, four track mixing desk, yeah. Drum machine, built in sampler, and a keyboard, two decks in the way, you know? You can make, that's your basics. And from there, you just build up, you know what I mean? Get more technical, get more into it. Then that, from nowhere, you're a genius, you know? You know what I mean? So what sort of people are making names these days? Like, I mean, what sort of labels are the real upfront up dance, UK, well, rap rave labels, that well, sort of thing? There's quite a few, you know, there's quite a few, like, there's a lot of the Belgian stuff. Can yeah. you mention some labels? Like, names? RNS, right, and that's some of the British stuff that's coming up now, like, um, Reinforced, yeah, that's like new. But a lot of people are underground and about it, you know what I mean? They do maybe a lot of like dance music, you know, and like um, well there's so many labels that we really get into all of it, but yeah. <laughs> and um I mean what about warp and uh warp, yeah, yeah, rhythm beat and uh um, beat what's it called uh King Outer Rhythm, Rhythm King, all of them, I mean there's so many now, you know. You stay independent as well. I mean, a lot of them like to stay independent away from the majors so they can do what they want to do, you know what I mean? And the sellability, how? How well, it sells? Yeah. Well, from this shop, right? Hardcore is definitely selling a lot. I mean, we've tried to garage, hip hop, and like dance, like soul. I mean, but it doesn't really sell as much. You know? It must have something to do with the shop itself. Yeah, that from the shop Style. image, yeah, the shop image is hardcore. So if it comes out, they just come and looking for direct hardcore, nothing else. I mean, one or two little soul you just get away with, yeah, because they're dropping the race, you know? So, do these people come from just London, or do they come from all over? No, they come from all over the country. Yeah. Get people, we get a lot of um, Italians in here as well, a lot. Do you know what I mean? I know a lot of Italians, so personally, you know, where I've been at it a couple of times, DJ, you know. So is it likely that your shop also influences some of the Italian music that's yeah. being made? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite a one or two of the Italian DJs here, yeah, who make the records out there, they come down here quite regularly, do you know what I mean? And I say they get some influence, you know, when they go back home to make their tunes, do you know what I mean? And what about the Americans? Well, Americans, it's like, it's a different really thing, you know what I mean? Do you ever get any famous ones coming here? Not really, not really. They're more like, they only come over, they follow the hype. Do you know what I mean? They're like, whatever's running at the time, they're following it, you know? Where do you see passion in terms of uh, where would you like to take take passion in the future? Well, I'd like to take it to the top. Do you know what I mean? Basically, worldwide known, you know. Just like so to sort itself, really. You know what I mean? It's not my life, so I'd like to see it go. Okay. Do you have any artists on your label at the moment? And what's the name of your um, label? We've got two new labels coming out. Names haven't been decided yet. But I mean, artists is like, will come from well-known people in the house market already. I mean, I won't really say that, but those people will be on the art, on the label, I mean. Okay.
Thank you. And what about CD? How are you finding the CD market? Is it affecting your business in any way? Not really, no. Because a lot of people do want to hit the record home and play them. Mess about it on the two turntables. I mean, CDs, right? Mess about it, that the CDs can cost you a lot of money. You know what I mean? For the players to mess about with that, it's holding for money. So they're not going to switch so quickly in the technology is before that happens. Really. But they also say that there's a new CD uh, where you can actually scratch That's on. I'm saying that costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. And like, a good couple of years before they get that, then I'll be able to switch as well. Do you know what I mean? Right. So is it possible if you had people coming and asking you for CDs as well, upfront CD, mm, yeah, that you'd yeah, stop yeah, a bit? Because yeah. quite a few independent labels are bringing out their music on CDs. You go to H and you and see quite a few independent labels with their CDs there. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us with regards to upfront dance music in the UK? You know, is yeah. it? Well, I'd like to say that, well, the music in the UK ain't gonna die for now. Do you know what I mean? Last year they were saying Nasty Dice was going out and this, that and the other. As you can see, it's not going out nowhere. Do you know what I mean? It's still there. It was be there. It's gone out of the media. Though. It's gone out of the media. That's the best way. That's the best that was killing it. That's the best thing. That's right. That's right. right. The scene right. killing it. But the scene itself still The scene like itself is strong. Yeah, it's massive. Strong, 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 strong. Massive. strong. You know what I mean? Massive. You take it, take for instance, Freedom's Never Feet, like, what, next week, Saturday? Pop down there and you'll see how strong it is. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Following it, you know? Okay. We'd like to take you up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. All right then. Cheers. Yeah, man. Cheers. Sweet. All right. <laughs> I'll get the money. 
Everybody make some sound. Understand that the shop's called Black Market. Can yeah. you just give us a little insight as to why it's called Black Market? Um, and we know you're kicking it in the UK because we don't we do a lot of illegal things. I think that's probably why. <laughs> in what way? Well, we're currently getting sued for selling New Jack City T-shirts on the worst post. I can tell you that. Time Warner, everybody, uh, are uh, making us pay a lot of money because we're selling the T-shirts unofficially. Is that bootleg um, stuff? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean we didn't know they were bootlegs, but we just did it. Uh, black Market is. Uh, it's a shop we sell fundamentally black music, which has developed into a widespread dance thing in England. And there you go. So, um, in terms of rave, upfront dance, UK, yeah. Um, what sort of um, music do people buy from you? Uh, well, we have three main types of music. Really, it's hardcore rave, the soul influence, garage stuff, and then down here we have hip hop and soul. Swing beat, American, mainly American, R&B stuff. Right. And what were the s original founders, the original people that my man mentioned? Yeah, original people who started the shop were Rene Gelston, Steve Gervier. Uh, and they had a club going at the WAG. And uh, they just decided to set up a shop as an extension of that. And it took off. It was about three years ago, right? Three years ago. And what's happened to these? Uh, original people now? Uh, they're all off doing different things. Steve Jervier doing his own production. He's got his own publishing deal with, I think, Phonogram Records. And Rene Gelson's doing Black Market Record Label. Right. Putting out rave stuff and some soul stuff. What about DJing? Are they doing um, anything? No, I mean, people tend to want to progress from that. And they've both, you know, moved on. Steve's doing a bit of DJing. Steve's doing DJing for Kiss FM. Uh, but, uh, Rene was never a DJ. Right. Plenty of DJs in here though. And what makes uh, Black Market one of the most upfront UK record shops? Uh, it's, we've got pleasant and friendly staff. <laughs> oh, <so laughs> okay, so thanks very much then. Would you say the UK dance scene is growing? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And is it ready to be exported around the world, there. maybe? Yeah. It is. And it's slowly getting through amongst all the rubbish that's coming out as well. Right. And the new talents themselves, have they been nurtured? Yeah. They are exploited. 
<laughs> so, um, you know, to sort of like conclude, I mean, what would you say is the motto of Black Market? The motto? Yeah, you know, like, for example, Marks and Sparks have got quality, you know, price and things like that. Is there a Service motto? with a smile. Um, no, there isn't one, really. <laughs> It's supposed to be keep the vibe yeah, alive. Yeah, it used to be keep the vibe alive. But, we've, but if you listen upstairs, and like people <laughs> coming up there that used to listen to Duran Duran a couple of years ago, and now give, giving it the big end. Yeah, right, right. It's right, not right, the same right, thing. Right. It's not the same thing. You know, you've got to yeah. keep it, keep, get down with it. So it's to keep the vibe alive. Yeah. yeah. So what I mean, happens it's a when shame that vibe you know, like we sell all this rave music and it's out of financial necessity. And if we don't, then we'll shut down. And we want to keep going for the people that are really into music, you know. But as you can hear, there ain't much of a vibe up there because people don't even get into the music, they just stand there like zombies. Or they're coming down and on as the drugs you say, from last night. Yeah, they, <laughs> last year they weren't even listening to dance music, they were listening to like Bill Collins or. Like so what you're saying is like new people who've not been really influenced by this or not been really part of the scene That's are it. actually getting involved. So mm -hmm. isn't that possibly then um, that the scene's actually mm -hmm. expanding? No, because they, they're not into the same, they're not into the scene in the same way that... You mean the passion? Yeah, you know, like... I mean, when they go out, they have to take drugs or whatever, you know. It's right, not the same and that's not what it's about, they're basically. They're killing it, they're yeah, right. killing it. They're not getting into it. Of course there's people that get into it, and yeah, that's good, but they're yeah. half these people, they're not. Yeah, that's not what it's really about at the no. end of the day. Excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. <laughs> and what about um, this new club that's opened, the uh, Ministry of Sound? Ministry of Sound. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's just basically that's been quite hyped up, I think, what it really is. But I mean, basically, it's just a good club, and more clubs like that should be more clubs should be like that in London. I can make the clubs seem a lot better. People really seriously um, talk about their sound systems because that's the main problem with London club scene is that the sound systems are terrible. And um, speaking as a DJ, people just don't spend money on it and they should because it would make people want to go out a lot more. So where would you like to see the UK upfront dance music going? Um, well I'd just like to see people making music that they really think is good and stop thinking about what it's going to sell. Because at the end of the day, I know that like they were, you know, making money is a necessity, but at the end of the day, it's what is good that, is, that counts and is progressive, and that's the way people should go. Right. And how's the CD market affecting you at the moment? Do you have CD any problems? CD market. Well, yeah. Because, it's killing us. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. People don't realise how serious it seems to be. Like getting out of hand now, you know. In what way? Well, I mean, there's a lot of. Um, Hip hop artists, for example, that they're just not coming out on vinyl now, and it's like if you haven't got a CD player, then you can't listen to their music, and it's just, you know, terrible. Well, no, There's I nothing know. we can do about it either, because, you know, they're coming from America. What so, about the UK uh, scene? Well, the UK is not as bad at the moment, but I mean, it's probably going to follow the Americans. And, I mean, hopefully they won't go as quickly as the American. Basically, all soul, jazz, and hip hop is just not coming out of vinyl anymore. Albums, 12 inch only, and it is. What about for the DJ? Is it, it going to fit the DJ? Well, eventually it will, yeah, because. Um, 
I mean, CDs obviously are not the same as records, you can't scratch them and you know, mixing is all done for it's not the same thing at all. And okay, the sound quality is better, but at what cost? And a lot of DJs are like really pissed off about it, but it's like out of, it's out of hand, it's got out of hand because record companies have been controlling it and um, they're making records more and more scarce, they're pushing CDs and people making them want to think that CDs are better when they're not even that better anyway. And it's just a conspiracy. <laughs> so like if you want to you wanna put on an event and you want to play decent music, and you want to charge a respectable price, i.e. four or five pounds, you know, there could be a bleep promoter will come in and charge ten pounds, you know, so straight away the person that controls the club, you know, they wear the cost, they're just into making money. So if a guy's going to do a night and charge ten and play bleep music, then yeah, they're going for him and guys like me, we're getting the squeeze. And so we're just doing illegal house parties and whatever, you know. But it's not even that, it's the masses, the majority of the people listen to this stuff you know the people that listen to the good stuff it's, it's spread out all over London and the, you know it's difficult it's hard to get them all in one place at one time to keep it really firing that's what it is right. so that's where people like Kiss come in because anytime Kiss like advertise something in choice it becomes good like Garage City the people that were there last week were from everywhere all walks of life from everywhere and everyone got down and was safe so, in terms of um, like venues for you, what would you like to see done? You know, in terms of venues, where would you like to see yourself going in terms of your music? Because you're the DJ, you're influencing the scene as well, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So, what opportunities would you like to see? Well, I'd just like to see the the club owners deal with people like myself on a level where they deal with. You know the other the other promoters and the other DJs. That's all. It's like we don't we don't get respect. We've been playing music for years. You know I've been DJing since 1983, but I ain't luge. I'm still coming down to the black market. I'm still a regular guy. You know what I'm saying? Because the the people don't want to do with no four pound real music business. They prefer to do it ten pound, twenty pound, twenty five pound. And drugs. Why, and why, drugs. Why do you think that is? It's it's purely money. And plus and plus also it's um. A, a, lot, a lot of it is like a black white thing. You've got to remember that it's a black white thing. You know? But do you feel that the music is that offering an opportunity to sort of unify people together, black and white? I mean, not to sort of get into that you know, in too, too deep, but I mean, from the point of view of bringing people together, you know, yeah, love, peace. But club owners don't give a shit, man. Like the wag now, the wag never used to let like, black people in there too tough. But now there's a recession on. They have to, because the black people come there properly, they've got to do it now. It's a good night on, isn't it? Respect. Mm -hmm. They didn't used to let us in. And that's, I'm being truthful. But no, hold it. Respect's once a month. Yeah, I know. Once a month. It's not, it's not once it's a cramped. week. It's not once a week. It's once a, a month. month. Once a month. But when the recession, guarantee, I'll guarantee you, it's when the recession is over, and then all the sort of like, all the yuppies start going back down, then they won't let you in again. <laughs>
Well, I don't like waiting around, do you know what I mean? No, we've been waiting for about an hour and a half and we're still at the back of the this queue. This is incredible, isn't it? <laughs> we want to go in and ride. You spend like 20 quid and go and stand outside somewhere for about... Like, How much do you pay? 22 quid, I think. 22 it's quid? So, when you say you want to go and rave, I mean, what is raving? Well, I don't know, I didn't know. This would be like this, I thought, you know, they was going to open the doors at 10, they let Pitt win steady. And you'd be able to get in there and have a good time. Right. Like a lot of music sounds because it look, all looks eight good. Eight hours of just dancing and watching the lights. Right. Yeah. It all so looks what's good. it normally like inside there then? I don't know. I've never been. Hot. It's like this oh. before, really. I heard there's a good atmosphere. Yeah. It's what, like yeah. Everyone's yeah. Really normally. Friendly. I mean, when you get in there, if you get everyone in there, right. it's friendly. It? Yeah. And what about the spectacular laser lights and things They're like? Brilliant, yeah. 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 You yeah, get some really goodness. Good. Nice. But like this is, I mean, you can't tell until you get into something like this because yeah. they're they're all different, you know. So what I mean? seen it for yourself afterwards. Yeah, so what about uh, sort of music they're playing there? I mean, up front dance. Yeah, pretty hardcore. Really. Hardcore. What is hardcore? Uh, bass. <laughs> yeah. Well. Pure bass. So what is hardcore? Well, it's, it's pure just, bass. <laughs> what is it for most of the people who come in here? Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's just heavy dance, you know what I mean? It really gets you going, doesn't it? It's like yeah. adrenaline pumping music, definitely. Yeah. Right. Digital good sound music. Right. That's what it's all about. I think a lot of people appreciate just good sounds. Right. Do you know what I mean? If you get good sounds and good rays in that. So do you like travel like far to get here? Or oh, sort of local? Seven Oaks. Yeah, Seven Oaks. Seven Oaks. Seven Oaks. I'm coming from Bromley in Kent, so... Fair distance, isn't it? Yeah. So it yeah, must be really worth, worth it. it. So well, hopefully, if you can get in, like this is, this is a, well it's madness, it's, it's, I've never seen nothing like this before. No, oh, it's queuing, it's endless, it takes, it's been bloody hours we've been out and it's freezing cold. But it's worth it when you get in there, is that what you're saying? Yeah, mate. Yeah, definitely. This cup of tea's it's worth it. It's worth it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is about half an hour for a cup of tea. Right. Do you have to pay much for that? Yeah, it's a crazy. pound. <laughs> so what, does many of your other friends come down here as well? There's about six, seven. Um, no, about ten of us. Yeah. So what about discos? Don't you go discos or clubs anymore then? Clubs. clubs sometimes. But clubs seems okay. But this is different better. Yeah. In what way? It's bigger. Funny atmosphere. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like if you if you can get in an event that's like maybe sort of twelve hours and you're in there and with a lot of nice people, you know what I mean? Right. And so you're getting away from everything else. Yeah. And it's safe. You know what problems. Don't think. But, yeah, club scene's a bit different because you're in there and you pay money to go and stand in there to be looked at, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? In there, nobody cares what you're doing in there and you're just meeting people from all different streams, you know what I mean? Right, so, like, people wear whatever they want, yeah. they um, yeah, so. just basically enjoy themselves, dance. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of people do pay 20, 20 quid, 30 quid. I know a bloke down there bought a ticket for about 30 quid, didn't he? Yeah, 35. So, I mean, if he's buying tickets for 30 quid, but then again, you know what I mean, he might queue up for three hours, four hours, and then only been there for a couple of days, they might close it at eight, you know what I mean, you never know. But then again, <laughs>